We're talking about Iran here, four young uh, Iranians who live in Canada and large Iranian population in Canada, in the USA, all over uh, the world now, the diaspora, any nation that's faced crises and so on. Do you remember the history, of course, uh, of this country? It's not um, that Shah guy and then he goes and someone else comes in. It, it's a democratic government overthrown by oil interests from Britain and the USA. That doesn't mean that uh, now people just blame the Americans and the British the whole time, but there is a context uh, to what goes on. In, in world politics. Let's talk about censorship here, because I was looking through the list of newspapers and magazines, dailies and weeklies and monthlies that have been banned, um, and one organization calling Iran the, the biggest prison in the Middle East for, for, for journalists. I mean, this is, this is very worrying and troubling. Um, can you speak your mind in Iran? Um, I'm not saying breaking laws of libel and slander, whatever, we have those, but can you speak your mind on a democratic or political point and, and still be free? I think you can, but you have to be able to use euphemism to a lot. To right. a um, to a certain degree, and so, for example, you have mm, you have a very popular progressive newspaper called Sharq now in Tehran, which is published, and it's kind of a from a liberal democracy kind of point of view. But you know, you can't say you can't criticize the supreme leader in you know certain ways, in in direct ways. You cannot say that supreme leader has done this and we object to that. Mm. You, have to, you have to say basically this, that some of the top officials of the country have decided to do this and this and that, this and, and we don't think it's, in, it's appropriate. But you would convey your message, but in a very indirect way. So because, you know, we have the publishers and there's so, there's so much money involved and the publishers cannot risk just by losing all the investments just by one word or two words. So they are, th there is a huge amount of self-censorship self now in Iran in, in, when it comes to the newspapers. Other media, like the radio and TV, is completely controlled by the government, so there is no problem with that. And then they have begun to completely sanitize the Internet as well, because they're using these techniques to filter websites that they don't want people to watch or have access to. And it's very damaging because, for example, my own website has lost so much audience from Iran in How the past they few years. They have a blacklist of certain URLs or web addresses and they keep that updated. And that's effective? It's very effective. So the only thing that I, c that I think is much more influential than any other medium from the outside Iran would be the satellite TVs. Because they are not, you know, you wouldn't need an ISP or internet service provider mm -hmm. in between to be able to access them. So people can directly connect to the satellite. And do a lot of people have satellite TV? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the government doesn't try to control that? It's a bit difficult for them to enforce it. Yeah. You need a small dish on top of your roof. That's all. It's so that cheap. Can be hidden. The, they yeah. produce all the material now in Iran. So it's not illegal to have satellite TV? It is. It is, it is illegal. illegal. It's one of people those cover it with thing. garbage and right. stuff on there. No, there and, are many, and, many, many and if you were caught, illegal. what would happen? Fines. Yeah, fine. not, not much, though. See, what, what, you're, you're painting a picture here that is not as brutal as some people would think. But I think of Jordan, for example, which, for all its problems, it, it, it is is a very free country compared to many in the Arab world. You, you look at um, uh, the daily newspaper, um, the, the Times that comes out of uh, Jordan, and the king is never criticised, and, and they speak of him in reverential terms. So he's, I think he's a very decent man in many ways, but mm. that's a form of self-censorship. We're not talking about Soviet style or Nazi style here. That's, that's I seems was to be the in picture Jordan you're actually, and I was shocked how much people were suddenly reacting differently or weirdly when I was talking about the king or the, the queen. They wouldn't even touch there's that a, issue. There is, there is a genuine respect, and also there is a state fear. Approved. I, I saw but fear in their eyes when I brought this up, and I couldn't uh, believe that I could easily talk about Khamenei in Tehran, and everyone does that. So yeah, the Supreme Leader about could them. be joked in taxis. And, there and are so many jokes about his hands, which has some disability. Really? You have no idea how much people make fun of him in public in these kind of what things. About they make fun of him, but I, I think that the, the, the picture that we're painting a little bit here is totally skewed. I mean, there is no freedom of the press in Iran. I think we can we can say that, can't we? Or yeah, are we saying that been, there is freedom of the press? There is limited freedom of press. It's not as black and white. I mean, you can have... I mean, uh, it's, it's not black and white. Yes, there are many shades of grey, but there is no freedom of the press in Iran. There is no constitution, and you look at the constitution, it says that um, within Islamic criteria, everything in conformity with Islamic criteria. Yeah, but it's like many other things, it's not enforced that much. 
Well, I mean, uh, one of the things that you brought up, which I found quite disturbing, that you said that, you know, yes, there is a thriving gay scene in Iran, but when he asked, for instance, what would happen if two people get cut, you know, last year, two boys were hung for engaging in such acts. I no, mean, no, no, no. no that, that, that was a lie. That wasn't for, what happened. Yes, I know. They were not hung because they were They were, they were raped a boy? Because they raped, they raped a minor, and that was completely... It came so out you're wrong. telling it me that homosexuality in Iran is something that is tolerated no, by the government? No, again, it's black and white. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, no, no. It, again, it's, it's not black and white. I think. I'm, if you, I've got the wrong if country. That, <laughs> when no, was I the last time you were in Iran? It's amazing. 1999. It's changed a lot since then. I'm sure well, it changed from last week, too. But that will be a radical change for, for country. This you, is I mean, they have the death penalty, <laughs> um, and they threatened to use it uh, on others, too. But you, you're, you're saying, I mean, we're taking an example, and it's a, it's a fairly appropriate one of, of tolerance for, for, for gay people. There are different degrees of that. But if two people are openly gay in Tehran, Nothing's going to happen. Well, let me let me t let me give you my personal <laughs> experience to you, <laughs> which I was there in February. Okay, sure. And, but, but when we come back, okay. we'll do this probably because we've got a break otherwise. And uh, so I'm I'm going to go on vacation to. Tur no, I'm not. I'm really not actually. Back in a few moments. Don't go away. <laughs>